launched our 30 hour teach TOEFL exam preparation course. So we already launched the teach IELTS preparation course, but now we've done the TOEFL as well. And coming soon, we'll have the Cambridge. So just a bit of background about eTOEFL online teacher training and who we are. So what we want to do is, well, what we do is we help people get started teaching English online, trans, you know, uh, people that are just starting out and want to start a new career or change careers. And also people that already have TOEFL certificates or CELTA certificates or anything like that but who want to launch their careers. Because as we've all known and, uh, and discovered that having a TEFL certificate is only step one. And after that, there's a lot more to do afterwards to launch your career. So one of those things that you can do to help uh, boost your career and get more students and charge more per hour is to specialize in a certain area. And we focus on exam preparation. That's why we've got the IELTS, we've now got the TOEFL, and we're going to come up with the Cambridge pretty soon. Um, your hosts today, I'm joined by Leslie McCallum, Hello, Leslie. Thank Hello, you. everyone. Leslie is a previous graduate of ours, like Roxanne, who did the IELTS course for us. Uh, Leslie, as well, is a, is a previous graduate who has experience in this and has created the course for us. Um, Leslie, would you like to introduce yourself and just give the people some background about yourself? Okay. Hello again. Uh, my name's Leslie. I started online uh, just over three years ago. And I was actually just teaching generally at first, and I got my first IELTS student and thoroughly enjo enjoyed doing test prep. Mm. So then I went into Cambridge prep, and I enjoyed that. And then I discovered the TOEFL. And I'm actually loving the TOEFL. Uh, so, and that's a growing market, which I'll tell you more about just now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I've got three years of test prep uh, experience now and lots of other teaching experience, but online teaching uh, three years. I see over there on our slide, 30 years of teaching experience. Yes, yes. <laughs> just, just a bit. All right. A bit. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Um, my name is Jody van Avestazen. I am the owner of eTEFL Online, uh, Online Teacher Training. I am also a TEFL certified. I have 40 years of ESL teaching experience, and 10 years of that was teaching Cambridge specifically. So I'm the one that will be creating the Cambridge course. All right, when that comes, hopefully by the end of this year, but probably next year, by the way, things are going right now. Um, but in the meantime, we have the IELTS and the TOEFL, so there's more than enough to go around. So today we just wanted to give you an introduction to the course and explain a little bit what TOEFL is, what the exam is, what's inside it, why we put it there, how, why it's important and all those things, okay? And then at the end of this, we'll have a little Q&A session where you can ask us any questions that we might not have covered or any doubts that you may have, okay? So first of all, what is TOEFL? If you're new to this, uh, TOEFL is the test of English as a foreign language. Uh, it's a standardized test to measure the English ability of non-native speakers that wish to enroll in English-speaking universities. So we'll talk a little bit about the differences and similarities to IELTS as well during this. Um, but one of the main differences is that TOEFL is, is specifically for universities, all right? This is what, it's an, have a high academic standard and universities are looking for this. So if somebody from a non-English speaking country wants to go study in Canada or the United States, the university will probably require a TOEFL and a specific score uh, in that TOEFL test, okay? So the test is accepted by more than 11,000 universities and other institutions in over 190 countries and territories. Millions of people are taking this exam every year as well to try and go and study abroad and improve their life and, and things like that. So it's, people take it very, very seriously. That's another benefit to this is that your students are very motivated, okay? And um, just a little bit about the exam. There are two formats to it the TOEFL Essentials and then the TOEFL IBT, okay? So the Essentials is an online course, an online exam, it's taken from home. It's a much shorter exam, it's one and a half hours, and it measures the four core language skills like IELTS, like Cambridge, they all measure the same, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Um, apparently, this is a friendlier test format, shorter, engaging tasks uh, that relate to both academic situations and everyday life. And then the old traditional TOEFL IBT, which is taken at a test center. The student has to go in and sit down, it's three hours, write a paper. Um, and then the, they should uh, also allow for 30 minutes to check in. So it's a whole thing. 
I know that when I did Cambridge as well, I was an invigilator, a supervisor for those test centers, get there beforehand and to get it set up. So you're looking at the students are looking at like three and a half hours. So that day for them is gone. It is test day. Um, and also this test does tests the same things, the same four sections, reading, listening, speaking, and writing back the others. Okay, just like IELTS and just like Cambridge. So what is the aim of this course? We created this course specifically to help you as a teacher or a tutor prepare your students for this exam. So we've covered those four parts. We've broken, broken down the course into the reading, the writing, the listening, the speaking. We want to give you an in-depth understanding of what is required for each part, what the students should be aiming for, what uh, ETS is looking for, the, the company, that organization that owns these exams, what they want the student to say, what they want them to, to read, okay, you know, to get the, the best out of the exam, what are they looking for in each section so that we can help you with that and then you can help your, your students as well. Okay. So we've included, the, as I said, we've broken them all down into unit one to four. All units consist of a video, two and a half hours of study material. Some of this, I mean, this for you could be one and a half hours if you're a quick study, or it could be five hours if you take longer to assimilate information, but on average, two and a half hours of study materials and a progress quiz after each one. We've included practice exercises, sample questions. There will also be four 30-minute video presentations breaking down each part of the exam and a 30-minute presentation on the course and the test, which is this very video you're watching here. And then at the end, just a curated list. <laughs> this was this was a, quite a task at the end of creating this course. <laughs> Hundreds of hours of traditional uh, resources and materials for you to go and use as a teacher. So we also wanted to create this course as, as a resource for you. All right, so it's not just a course that you do and at the end you get a certificate and yay. You can do that, yes, and there is a certificate and it is accredited, but we want to give you lifetime access to it as well so that you can come back as a resource. So when you get your next student and you're doing a reading class, you can't remember reading, you can go back to the course, find the materials, use the uh, download PDFs, uh, watch the videos again, and then go to those links and find all those additional resources as well. So you can always have access to this course to come back to at any stage. All right, so that's my part of this little presentation to begin with. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Leslie now to explain a little bit why she included these things and and uh, and what they are basically. All right, Leslie. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so the most important thing about TOEFL is the structure. It's the biggest difference between IELTS and TOEFL, uh, and I think that's the big the question on everybody's mind. What's the difference? and it's the structure. TOEFL is very, very integrated. In IELTS and Cambridge and other English tests, you do the four skills differently, uh, separately, I should say. With the TOEFL, the skills are very integrated. So in the speaking, they've got to listen as well as speak. They've got to read as well as listen, as well as speak. So um, it's it's very exciting in teaching the uh, TOEFL because it's so integrated. But the only problem is if they have one weak area, it can bring down their marks as a whole, especially something like listening, because there's listening in in all the, the different sections. So, for example, one of my students, she's good in all th three skills, but her listening is weak, which is affecting everything because it's so integrated. So it's very important that you learn the structure and how different it is to IELTS. The format, uh, if, if the students know what the format is like, then it makes it so much easier for them. Um, and it's, it, it's exciting to teach because it's so different. There's a lot of learning for you to do as a teacher. And I will go into how I've, just now I'll show you how I've tried to help you learn all these differences. But focus mainly on the structure and how different it is. And then obviously I've tried to include tips and tricks as well that help you remember 
the differences. So the question types, there are also many, many different types of questions in the TOEFL, especially in the reading. They have a variety of different reading question types. In many ways, IELTS is simpler, but TOEFL is exciting. It really is exciting. And um, once you get to know those different question types, it does get easier. Also, to help that, in each section, I've tried to put the facts at a glance. So if you screenshot those facts or make a note of those facts, access them easier because you won't remember everything, all the differences like the speaking. In future seminars, we will tell you the uh, more detailed uh, of, of each section. But for example, some of the speaking, they have 10 seconds prep and 30 seconds to speak. Another part of the speaking, they have 30 seconds prep, 60 minutes to speak. So those facts I've tried to put down so that you can see them easily just before you prepare, especially if you're do, doing different test prep. For example, uh, yesterday I had Cambridge IELTS and TOEFL all in one day. And then you're trying to remember which facts are which. So it's very useful to have the facts that you can see quickly and easily and the question types, all the differences. Okay, and then many, many ex exam questions, practice questions. And of course, there is quite a lot on the internet. You can Google it and have a look, but hopefully the test will help you to see uh, a wide variety of different examples. And then also the assessment criteria to help you see what they're gonna be looking for. Because once again, that's also different to IELTS in Cambridge. Some of them are the same, like understanding gist of reading, understanding uh, the different structures. Some of those are similar, but there's some of the assessment criteria are also a bit different. So in each section, I've also put the assessment, assessment criteria at a glance that you can see. Just one thing on the example exam exercises. In 2020, TOEFL made a slight change to some of the uh, question types. So if there's a little bit of, um, if on one website you see slightly different facts to another website, it's just s some of them haven't been updated. But right. it, it is small differences, it's not enormous. So they cut out some of the oral, they changed the one small section of reading, but the basic is still all the same. So not to worry if they're those small differences. Okay. Okay. And then the activities, uh, I've tried to give you a wide variety of different activities for you to see the type of things that will be useful and to help them prepare. And of course, strategies, because in test prep, it's not just teaching the material, but showing them how to actually prepare. So a few strategies and of course, general sort of English um, strategies as well that you can use if you're teaching IELTS or Cambridge that will be generally useful as well. Strategies I find are very important. Yeah, this is something that we should clarify then for the teachers that are not specializing this at all yet, or just been teaching general English, is that uh, these strategies and these practice tests are really, really important. The One of the big benefits of, of specialist teaching for the students is that when they get to the exam, nothing is a surprise. They know exactly yeah. what the exam looks like. They know yes. how it's structured. They know what the answer sheet looks like. They know what the the you know what ETS is looking for on, on question in speaking and question four. They want this. This is what I've got to go find in this text. So general yeah. English teaching is one thing, 
you know, nouns and verbs and yeah. sentence structures and yes. all those kind of things that we know already. Um, but to be specific in these exams, this is what a student is going to pay extra for. This is what they yes. want in a specialist teacher, someone to show them these things that the average person does not know and that you will find out in the course. Yeah, and actually there's not all that much time to spend on grammar, sentence structure, all that mm. sort of thing when they prepare because they want, that's one problem, because TOEFL is so academic and it's quite difficult, they want, some of them want sort of an instant, uh, instant help mm. and they need two or three months to prepare. Sometimes they'll come to you for a bit of speaking practice, but they actually need a couple of months. Mm. And remember that when they sign up with you, that it's not, it, generally it's not quick. It yeah. does take quite a while, quite a bit of prep yeah. for them to gain confidence. They'll, they'll come to you. They all, they all do. <laughs> they yes. all do they think that that's, I just need a couple of weeks to go over this. And you're like, uh, no. nah, we'll, we'll see. Until we'll they see. realize how difficult it is. It is exactly. difficult. Yeah, this is more one of the more difficult ones. It is, right. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's that's basically the exam in a nutshell, the course in a nutshell, a little bit about the exam. We didn't want to have a, a super long presentation about this. Like I said, we're going to have other seminars, little 30 minute ones, which we'll have live as well, and then later include in the course for you to go back and look at, where we'll break down each section of the of an exam paper, the reading, the writing, the listening, the speaking, and then we'll come back to those. And that's, that'll be where all that detail is in. Um, yeah. Sorry, but, Jody, can I just yeah. say one thing? I would just of want course. to say that it's such a, a growing exam. Mm. I was counting up my numbers earlier. I've got equal numbers of IELTS. Cambridge and TOEFL at the moment, but my TOEFL numbers have grown incredibly in the last couple of months. A lot of Asian market. Mm. Uh, obviously, the universities in Asia are recognizing TOEFL more because suddenly a lot of Asian students are looking for TOEFL. So are these Asian really, students not looking to go study abroad then? or they're... Some of them are looking to study abroad. Some... In, in China itself, mm. and a couple in the States already mm. now needing to pass TOEFL. Yeah, because that's, so that's, that's an interesting demographic as well, that the mm. TOEFL is more now China, Japan, that area. Yes, uh, Cambridge, I found, is massive in Europe. Uh, the yes. Spanish, the Italians, the French, they go yeah. for the Cambridge. And the IELTS is just, uh, like, in my experience, a mixed bag. I don't know what Very what mixed, found. yes, yeah, yes. Really TOEFL, I have had some European TOEFL, but at the moment, it really seems to be growing in the Asian market. All right. So there you go. So um, for the people that are in our current time zone that we are now in the European, African time zone, um, the Asian students, when they study after work and after school, that would be mm. our mornings. Yeah. Um, and then Europeans for the Cambridge would study in their afternoons would be our afternoons. So you have to look at your time zones when you when you want to teach, where your students are and what that would relate to you. And that could help you define as well what kind of niche you should do. Should you you know focus on Cambridge um, or should you focus on IELTS, or TOEFL? That can also be an influencing factor where your students are and what time they're studying. <laughs> You don't want to be up at one o'clock in the morning. Doing <laughs> but it's actually <laughs> lovely having the, because I tend to then teach TOEFL in the morning, IELTS in the afternoon, Cambridge oh. also in the afternoon, evening. So it's a good, good mixed bag. All right. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, some of the benefits, like I spoke about earlier, lifetime access to the course. All right. You'll, it'll never expire. Anything, anytime something changes and we need to update the course, we'll update it and you'll get an email saying the course has been updated. Um, because they do update the same Cambridge IELTS, all of these people, as the course changes, like, like Lazy said in 2020, they updated the course again. So we'll reflect that, any changes, and you will have uh, free access to all of that, of course. In the future, you'll be able to go back and log in and check on something you may have forgotten or something that you need to refresh on and get some more, download some more resources and things like that. Um, some other benefits. Leslie, you wanted to talk about this one. Uh, yes. Oh, I jumped the gun just now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, this is the one. Too keen, yes. <laughs> All right. We've, we've yeah, already no, covered I've this one. I've just realized how popular it is. Uh, mm. And because it's different to IELTS and Cambridge, it adds another dimension to mm. test preparation. 
because yeah. yeah. IELTS in Cambridge are fairly, fairly similar. TOEFL is different, and it does add a little bit of excitement to test prep. Yeah, you don't want to be bored. <laughs> All right. No, no. This is no. a this is a good point then. Since we've already discussed this, we can discuss. The, there was a question in the chat as well about what's the differences. So we have this. We have spoken about some differences, but um, the structure is the main thing. Um, yes. But with the similarities between TOEFL and IELTS, it's it's one exam for for everyone. Whereas with Cambridge, you've got individual exams for every yes. single level, yes. and then yes. every level could be broken down in for for schools or for adults. So that's one of the reasons the Cambridge course is taking so long is because there's so many different yes, exams. Different levels. Yes, different um, Yes. So, but all of, at the end of the day, all of them uh, cover the reading, writing, listening, and the speaking. Yeah. TOEFL blends them together, get a more complex um, understanding. Like I said, it's, tri it's for people that want to go study abroad at major universities. Um, we yes. work with some people in Japan that have a lot of graduates uh, doing TEFL courses from Harvard, and Stanford, and all of those places, and the TOEFL would be a great niche for them to be able to to help their fellow students, for example, um, to get abroad and, and study at these universities. Also, right. another difference, sorry, is sure. the scoring of TOEFL. Mm -hmm. It's not bands, it's scores. And you may see sometimes they mention raw score mm -hmm. and normal score. Like in the reading, you the students might actually be scored the score over 30. And then that's the raw score. In the writing, it's calculated on a raw score and then transferred to normal score. The total is out of 120. And then certain universities we have uh, expected levels. So mm. for each section, 26, 27 out, oh, of, okay. out of the 30. So it's so, not band score like IELTS. So each, each section is measured out of 30? Yes, yes, All for right. a and total then... of 120. But with the raw score, it might actually, actually be worth more than 120, which is then leveled out All right, to but... the 120 score. Okay, so then a university would say, okay, you've done the TOEFL, well, we require that you have a 90 out of 120 yes, or an 80 yes, or something. Yes, yes, So and that's a, a hundred, yeah. a hundred is the expected uh, score. So it's quite high. It's quite high. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. So make that clear to your students as well, that they've yeah. got to really aim for the stars in this, yeah. in this test as well. Okay, so that's what... But yeah, check with the university. I mean, that's the thing about teaching these these kind of exam test preps is that you work one on one with students. They know what university they they're working towards. You can mm -hmm. find out what the expected result is from that university specifically, um, and then work towards that. All right. Um, niche. We've spoken about this as well. We seem to be just mixing all together. It's just that, that's fine. Though. We're having a very <laughs> natural conversation over here. But yeah, niches, uh, we speak a lot about this. If you look at uh, a lot of websites and Facebook pages going about specialist uh, or independent teachers, find a niche, find a niche. And that's, it's very easy to say, oh, you should get a niche and then you can charge more power. But like, how do you find a niche? What is a niche and things like that? So a lot of people use their previous experience from previous jobs. If they've been in law, if they've been in real estate or whatever, they can use that knowledge to help people that, that want specific help in, uh, say, a Spanish lawyer or a, a Greek travel agent uh, or real estate agent that has uh, English English clients. So they don't want to learn general English. They want to learn specific English for their, for their niche, for their, their area. So a niche, instead of trying to find one and develop one, what you could do is just go into the exam prep niche. Millions and millions and millions of people are taking this exam. So just between the IELTS and the TOEFL, we're talking about 5 million people a year taking these exams. There's already a niche for you. We can do a 30-hour course. Uh, with lifetime support afterwards and lifetime uh, updates. So you can always go back to it. You'll always be learning hundreds of hours of resources. So you'll have this in your back pocket to, to create your own niche and specialize in exam preparation because it really is just growing and growing and growing. Do we have any questions? I was having a nice little chat here, but if we've missed anything <laughs> and anybody has any questions, please uh, share them in the chat function here. Um, Leslie, is there anything you wanted to add, something we may have forgotten or something you want to stress? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I just, um, I'm thoroughly enjoying TOEFL. So mm. I hope that uh, other uh, teachers can also uh, enjoy the the diversity as much as I am. But mm. I think I've, I've said everything, <laughs> all the basics. <laughs> you have gone over that. Look, there's just to go over the chat, we've got uh, uh, one from long ago. The different, can you explain the difference between um, uh, TOEFL and IELTS? We've already explained that. Uh, how long will it take to prepare a student? Wow. Um, oh, it's very. <laughs> Yeah, yes, it depends yes. on the student. Yeah, uh, but on average, probably not less than three months mm. on average. Um, that's another thing I wanted to talk about as well, was when I did Cambridge preparation as well. Uh, tell the students always, like, I'm not going to teach you general English. Uh, mm. You should already have the level required, what we're going to work on here. So do a level test with your student, find out where they are first. And if they way too low to even get in, you know that they're not going to get 100. Tell them, like, look, first, let's focus on getting your English level up, and then let's move over to, to exam prep. All right? But if they do a level test and they've got a B2 or a C1 level, then, then okay, let's get started mm. with this. Okay? So make sure you know that beforehand. And that will affect how long it takes to prepare the student. Uh, um, do you need any prior qualification? to do the TOEFL course. No, you do not. You don't need a TEFL or a TESOL or a CELTA or anything along those lines. Um, if you have a teaching experience, that's enough. I mean, of course, a TEFL or a TESOL or a CELTA is going to prepare you to teach. These are skills that you'll have to have anyway, whether you've got them already through, through experience or whether you've got them through the course, you'll need the skills rather than the certificate to teach TOEFL.